Internment, a word not many know in the context of American history, but a word which impacted and will continue to impact thousands of Americans. In the face of a tragedy, Fred T. Korematsu fought for his rights as an American and a human. He brought his case to the Supreme Court, where he faced yet another tragedy. His determination allowed the triumph of Japanese Americans in the years after the case. Since the Meiji Restoration of the 20th century, Japanese immigrants settled along the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. They created close-knit communities while adjusting to this new world. In 1905, the victory of Japan in the Russo-Japanese War sparked a phase of anti-Japanese sentiments known as the Yellow Peril. This wave of racism manifested in the Asiatic Exclusion League, the 1913 Alien Land Laws, and the Immigration Acts of 1924, all which sought to restrict Japanese American rights and Japanese immigration to the U.S. The hatred peaked on December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. That day, Japan launched a surprise attack on the Hawaiian naval base at Pearl Harbor. One hour and 20 minutes after the president's address, Congress declares war on Japan. America had finally entered World War II. Japan did not want to provoke the U.S. into war. Rather, the country wanted to shock America into lifting its economic sanctions. The Japanese military attack on Pearl Harbor was the catalyst that sent into motion the mass incarceration of Japanese Americans. Anti-Japanese sentiments spread like wildfire throughout America. At first, Americans stood by their loyal Japanese countrymen, but fear of another Japanese attack and the media's damaging headlines began to change that. Public racial prejudices soon began to impact President Franklin D. Roosevelt's administration. Japanese loyalty was brought into question. Lieutenant General John DeWitt began proposing detention plans for Japanese Americans on the West Coast, his racist reasoning being, a Jap is a Jap. Although the Justice Department and FBI assured that Japanese Americans were not a security threat, the California Joint Immigration Committee pushed for a removal of all Japanese Americans. February 19, 1942 is a tragic day in history. On this fateful day, FDR signed Executive Order 9066, which authorized the relocation of Japanese Americans. General John DeWitt immediately followed the order, and on April 1, 1942, San Francisco begins evacuation. Internment was a horrendous tragedy. This was a betrayal, and I knew when I was going into the camp, I knew it was a betrayal. This is posted in Arizona. That's where we were. They weren't detention centers, they were prisons. We were behind barbed wire, we couldn't go out, all room, with no toilet, no running water, uh, no kitchen. It was cold in the winter and dusty in the summer. Pretty awful. So, so for the government, we are not even citizens, but we are non-aliens. It became routine for me to line up three times a day to eat lousy food in a noisy mess hall became routine to go with my father to bathe in a mass shower and begin the school day, ironically now, with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Japanese experience during World War II had long-term impacts, such as financial hardships, psychological trauma, and mental and physical health problems. The camps weren't only tragic. With educational opportunities, sports teams, and a sense of community, the Japanese spirit triumphed and their experiences prepared them for post-World War II life. Over 120,000 people were incarcerated across 16 temporary centers and 10 long-term camps in six states. Although most Japanese Americans on the West Coast were impacted, it is important to remember that nearly 150,000 Japanese Americans living in Hawaii were not incarcerated. People of Japanese descent represented over a third of Hawaii's population, so a mass incarceration would not have been feasible but some were still forced into camps. And so, for four years, American citizens of Japanese descent bore this tragedy of rights. In a tragedy-filled time like this, Japanese Americans needed a triumph. Would Fred T. Korematsu be the one? Korematsu was a California native who believed that Executive Order 9066 was unconstitutional. 
Instead of packing that one bag and relocating, he underwent plastic surgery and a name change. He was still arrested and sent to the camp in Topaz, Utah. On October 11, 1944, Korematsu, backed by the ACLU, brought his case to the Supreme Court, where a legal tragedy took place. Korematsu argued that Executive Order 9066 was unconstitutional because it violated the Fifth Amendment's Due Process Clause. On December 14, 1944, the 6-3 split Supreme Court added even more tragedy to the case. The court supported the incarceration of Korematsu. They upheld the racial targeting of Japanese Americans in a time of war. And essentially the judges said, we're going to defer to military authorities as to what's necessary during a time of war. The three dissenting justices did mention the racism against Japanese Americans, saying that as a loyal U.S. citizen, Korematsu deserves the full protection of the Constitution. Three other cases at this time dealt with Japanese incarceration. The Hirabayashi and the Yasui cases, decided a year before the Korematsu decision, upheld the curfew aspect of the executive order. The ex parte Endo case, decided on the same day as the Korematsu case, ruled that the government could not detain any loyal person. The Korematsu decision acted as a loophole for the Endo ruling, and its broad decision is why it is the most well known. Sometimes out of horrible situations, you can end up with some positive results. And again, without minimizing the harm that was done, I think there's some real triumph that we can talk about. One triumph from the ruling is the use of strict scrutiny. Yes. Kormaz has recognized uh, the genesis of the strict scrutiny, or rigid scrutiny test. Strict scrutiny is the highest standard of judicial review, requiring a demonstration of necessity for any discriminatory law. In the years since the decision, Japanese Americans have come to triumph and the tragedy of internment has come to serve as a lesson. Internment officially ended January 2nd, 1945, yet anti-Japanese organizations like the Japanese Exclusion League were still common. They attempted to stop resettlements but were countered by many pro-settlement groups such as the Quakers. In 1948, President Truman honored the 442nd Infantry Regiment, made up of second-generation Japanese Americans. He outlawed the California Alien Land Laws and signed the Japanese American Evacuations Claims Act, which tried but failed to properly compensate those interned. The Immigration Act of 1952 allowed Japanese immigration once more to the United States. Japanese Americans began to recover and flourish, even triumph in a country that did them so much wrong. The 1960s redress movement, spearheaded by the Japanese American Citizens League, finally triumphed in its goal when Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, providing federal acknowledgement and proper compensation. Since then, over $1.6 billion have been given to the impacted families. In 1982, Fred Korematsu also triumphed when historian Peter Irons discovered that the U.S. government hid and tainted evidence in his case. The next year, Korematsu overturned his conviction through a quorum nobis, we proved that the cases were manipulated. We proved that the evidence was falsified. He was eventually awarded a Medal of Freedom in 1998 by President Clinton. The tragic tale of internment serves as a warning for all. Japanese Americans have turned a lot of personal and collective tragedies into triumphs to ensure that uh, the unfair targeting of vulnerable and unpopular minorities doesn't result in something like a mass incarceration. Racism and bias are detrimental to society. Recently, the Supreme Court has been setting a new precedent with strict scrutiny that is beneficial to minority groups. In 2018, the Trump v. Hawaii case once again brought up the issue of racially motivated actions taken by the government. Many former internees filed amicai curiae to share their experiences. In the court's decision, Chief Justice Roberts said, Korematsu was gravely wrong the day it was decided, has been overruled in the court of history, and, to be clear, has no place in law under the Constitution. The ongoing issue of family separation at the Mexican border is reminiscent of incarceration. By knowing about the tragedy of internment, about the struggle so many Japanese Americans went through, every single person can honor Fred T. Korematsu and make the country a better place by standing up for what is right. Mm -hmm.